Hello, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Kenobi live every Monday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. I am your host, Dan Z. Excited to talk some Star Wars with you on an exciting week. This is the week of the premiere of The Mandalorian, and I obviously must, must love this community quite a bit because it's the first time on CWK Live that I'm not wearing a Star Wars shirt. How about that? Because the Bears are on. Did everybody see that Monday night football start with the Bears and the Rams and the Mandalorian? That was very, very cool. Well, thank you, Carter. It's good to see you here. And uh, yes, the Bears jersey, Khalil Mack. We are excited for the game tonight. But as Mita points out, it is CWK day. That's right. It is, in fact, a good part of Mondays. Thank you, Zach. Good to have you here. Mary, welcome to Coffee with Kenobi Live, as always. Who else is here? Ian, happy Mando Monday. Happy Mando Monday to you, my friend. Absolutely. We've got Tyler here. Tyler, hello, everyone. Go Bears. That's right, Tyler. Go Bears, indeed. We're going to hear more from Tyler and from this guy, Ross. Very soon, he says Bears and CWK, a Dancy holiday. You got that right, brother. Thank you so much. And there is Mason. Hello, Mason. Jim says, hi, everyone. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. Hello, Rick. Good to have you back on the show, my friend. Yes, the Mac attack is here. Yes, uh, Moff Gideon did a great job. Yes, that's all right. I knew I knew what you meant, Carter. I was gonna I was gonna allow it, so no problem. All right. So we've got a big week. Colby is here as well. Hello, Colby. Good to have you on the show, my friend. We are going to talk all about the Mandalorian and this beautiful little book behind me, the Star Wars book. And talk about our top five favorite Star Wars creatures. So let's go ahead and jump into what's brewing in the world of Star Wars. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. Thank you, Tom Kane. And hello, Darren. Good evening to you as well. So what is brewing in the world of Star Wars this week? Well, honestly... As we know, the 30th is the premiere of Season 2 of The Mandalorian, and today was the first of what promises to be an exciting couple of months of Mando Monday, which is something that Star Wars is doing. They are showing us all the different products that are coming out to celebrate Star Wars and The Mandalorian. So let's take a closer look at that. I've put together a bit of a presentation of things, so let's take a look at Mando Monday. All right, so... There are so many products, I don't possibly have the time to show you all of them because we'd be probably having the longest Facebook Live ever. But we have a lot of new stuff. We have the Monopoly Star Wars Mandalorian exclusive set. Yes, that's right. Four more days, Aaron. You got it, and good to have you back on the show. Now, this one is something that they used to do with the classic Star Wars board games. There was a Star Wars one that came with the retro Grandma Tarkin and an Empire Strikes Back one that came with... Luke Skywalker, Snowspeeder, but this one is coming with a Remnant Stormtrooper. I don't know that I've ever heard it called a Remnant Stormtrooper, so that's kind of interesting. But the only way to get that retro figure is through this Monopoly collectible uh, set. And it looks sharp. I mean, it does look sharp. Whether I will get it or not, I'm, I don't know about that. I'm kind of depending. I mean, that board is really sharp with the black go with the white letters. I do like that quite a bit. Quite a bit. Darren agrees. He says that Monopoly looks really good, and I agree. All right, and that's that Stormtrooper Retro is the exact same one they sold for A New Hope, but still, that classic Kenner Stormtrooper design is pretty great. Now, I didn't put every single one in here because I know people have already been looking and ordering, but they're coming out with another Black Series 6-inch Mandalorian, but this one is very unique. It is Din Djarin, of course. This figure is the first that actually has the removable helmet for the Mandalorian, and, of course, it comes with a child. Up till now, you've been able to get them separately. But now they're together, and Din Djarin has his helmet. And feel free to weigh in here, Tyler and everybody. But I'm pretty sure this is already sold out, at least the first little wave. Uh, feel free to correct me, Ross, or anybody who's happened to go for these figures. Then, and I know Corey Club, our good friend, got this one. Um, comes with a speeder bike. And the Scout Trooper, I'll always think of him as a biker scout. And it comes with a child. It's kind of a, a messed up that the child comes with the speeder bike uh, set, but considering what happens there. But 
it's it's a great looking set. I know Corey Club got one. He was excited. And Ian says, we all agree that Target and Walmart should be banned from getting exclusive, right? You know what? I don't really like the exclusives thing. I mean, it obviously helps those specific companies. And it's pretty clear that they probably have, have a great arrangement so that they can make that happen. And I understand that this is a this is a business. This is a consumer world that we live in. And that's how it works. I get all of those things. But it's still, I don't know. As long as it's as long as everybody has a fair chance of getting the collectibles, that's what I what I think is important. Zach does confirm that it was sold out, and Minta says, "My heart says yes, but my wallet screams no." Minta, I can relate to that. I completely agree. Tyler says that's a perfect starter set for people who haven't gotten the Mandalorian figure yet. Yes, because it comes with the child, and it comes with Din Djarin. I'm going backwards to reflect on what Tyler's talking about. Exactly, exactly. So there's that. Then we move on to more of the vintage line. This is, again, a three and three quarter inch collectible line. And we've got two new, more brand new ones. I'm assuming if we ever got Mandalorian carded figures that were actually not this vintage line, but the real ones, uh, this is what we would be getting. But this time we have the Mandalorian and the child. Again, they're together. This is the first time that the child is available as a three and three quarter inch figure. And then we've got the armor. That's a great looking sculpt as well. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on right here. For sure. And had I not already gotten the Mandalorian original figure, I would have considered this one. It looks like it's got the best car armor too. Terry says he's sticking with the retro line, but he wishes there wouldn't be such small limits to the pre-sales of the other lines. I agree. Like I said, they're going to make money. We want to give them our money. So make them available. And I get the importance and the excitement of chasing the collectible. Believe me, I've been chasing collectibles almost my entire life. But I also want to be able to have them. So I don't know. There, there's, a, there's a lot of pros and cons to this, but overall, it's, it's great fun just to have these as a possibility. Dave, Dave, good to see you, my friend. Dave says he's concerned slightly they're going to release this mini Black Series every week, especially these high-priced exclusives. Yeah, it's 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 going to be challenging for sure, Dave, and I don't blame you. I wonder how they're going to disseminate these collectibles. Ross says, I got, uh, I'm assuming he means two for the two Black Series. Oh, he got through. Yes, I'm sorry. For the Mando with the Child and the Biker Scout Child. Nice. Very good. I'm glad. Especially because you're a huge collector, for sure. Darren says the stores need to keep them in stock or make better deals on amounts of stock. And I would throw, go a step further, Darren, and say it would be nice if they would try to inform, maybe with a good email or a, or a presentation to the people stocking about the value of these collectibles and how highly how sought after they are. they are so we have a good turnover and that they're always on the shelves. Daniel says he used to have one of those original speeders. Yeah, same here. In fact, I'm looking at mine now. They're great. Tyler says the, the vintage Moff Gideon looks great. Can't wait for the Black Series version. Oh, interesting. I wonder if they'll ever have a Black Series uh, of the retro line, like the bigger ones. I don't know. But I know that's not what you're talking about, Tyler. That's just my brain randomly jumping to different places. Dave says Target seems to have lower numbers available for pre-order, but then more after release. I'm noticing that too, because you know they're going to be in stores eventually. It's just nice to get them when you mail when you request them online, because then there's a security that you actually have them. All right. So I purposely put these last because, well, no, I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. We also have Moff Gideon comes with a dark saber, which I think is extremely cool. Extremely cool. So that looks, that looks pretty sweet as well. Now here is the money shot. Look at these. This is the retro collection. Look how absolutely gorgeous these are. You've got Din Djarin on the left, the child on the right, and these are styled after the classic Kenner line that so many of us grew up with. I think Dan Brooks of, of LucasFilmStars.com said it best. He said he feels like he's hardwired to get these. I am too. I am too. I mean, look at them. They are absolutely phenomenal. They've got this wonderful sort of childlike quality, but they're also highly collectible. So you've got those two. I mean, the classics, right? That everybody's going to want to going to want. Then you've got Cara Dune and Grief Karga. It was great to see Carl Weathers' reaction on the StarWars.com live stream today uh, to seeing that figure. Carter says, the Moff Gideon is one I leave in the box. The, the back on that is phenomenal. I agree. It's really sharp. Tyler says, the retro figures are outstanding. They are absolutely outstanding. I mean, you can put retro on anything and I'm going to want it. But these are great. Absolutely great. And Ian's glad the retros are not exclusive. I agree. Because I, I feel like the, the first wave, weren't those Target exclusives, Ian? I think they were. And they were tricky to find. 
So I'm glad these aren't exclusive either. The exclusives should be for like really, really rare, uh, unique collectibles, in mind, but not stuff that everybody's going to want. Everybody's going to want this retro line. Terry agrees and says he loves the retro line, gives him the same feels I had as a kid. Absolutely. We've also got IG-11 and Queel. They're, ador like they're adorable and they're awesome at the same time, if that is even possible. But they are great. And Mason, I know, is watching now, and I'm sure... Uh, Mason, you've never seen close-ups of these. Aren't they amazing, buddy? I just love them so much. Love them. And then last but not least, Moff Gideon. And I love that... I mean, look at that. I didn't expect that we get so many. Like, even getting a retro line of the Mandalorian is basically a dream come true. Like, I... That would have been like... I almost feel like starting out this show by saying, Hey, you know what, everybody? I've only got, what, two wishes left because I would have wished for having the retro line of the Mandalorian or anybody that wasn't from the original trilogy just to have that look. And boy, do we ever get it. It is tremendous. I'm thrilled. Again, I only have two wishes left because that would have been one of my wishes to the genie. Really great stuff. All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, later in the show, we're going to look at some highlights from the book signing that I did last weekend. But let's go ahead and jump into our top fives. Now, this is top five favorite Star Wars creatures. And we had some interesting conversation about this at the dinner table. But I, I feel like I said it last week on the show. If not, I apologize. But I did post it on Facebook. These are creatures, right? They're non-sentient. So to me, a Gungan, well, not human. Or an Ugnaught, well, not human. Or an Ewok, well, not human. They're still sentient. They can still think. They have their own language, their own way of doing things. Creatures just sort of operate on primal instinct, you know, like monsters or creatures. So I'm hoping that's what what people made for their list. But we'll see. It's okay. You won't. You'll still be allowed to pass the class just fine. So don't worry about that. Darren says, anybody know what kind of prices the retros will have? They're nine ninety nine. They were on Hasbro Pulse. So hopefully that helps, Darren. And Mary says, with all the items that were announced today, it makes you wonder how much more there is to come over the next weeks. I think that too. And I think they did say, Mary, that they believe every week they're going to release collectibles that sort of reflect what's going on in the episodes. I mean, if they can sync that up, whew, that'll be impressive. Most impressive. And Terry says he purchased his for about 90 ships. That sounds about right. Yeah, for if there's seven, nine, about nine ninety nine each or so with... with tax and shipping that makes sense all right so number five for me of top five favorite star wars creatures first i have the blurg so blurgs are of course a recent addition i'll make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it more so blurgs are a recent addition to star wars obviously but they're not they were based on one of the ewok specials that george made after return of the jedi and then John Favreau took them and used them for, obviously, the Mandalorian. And they, I think, we became instant kind of favorites, for sure. Five for Jim is the Mudhorn. is a primal, unstoppable rage that makes it intimidating. Oh, Jim, man, I would have put the Mudhorn on here because it's such a cool design. It looks so realistic because the the magic of violin, that's a good choice. So, again, five is the Blurg for me. Ian's number five is the Mythosaur, instantly recognizable as part of the iconography of Mandalore. Are you noticing that all three that we've all had so far have all been from the Mandalorian? Very interesting. Not surprising. I mean, it, we've got Mandalorian fever here, coffee with Kenobi, and throughout Star Wars fandom. Five for Ross is a Bantha. First one, well, Banthas are in the Mandalorian, but of course, I'm sure that's not where Ross got his idea from. Banthas are a classic. I mean to uh, put Ewoks because they're basically Shih Tzus on two legs. <laughs> And Mason loves the Ewoks, too. He, he mentioned them first. Carter says the Rancor, it's awesome that they fill their victims with a neuro agent that can keep them alive for a thousand years. So I think you're thinking of the Sarlacc, Carter. But the Rancor is super, super cool as well. Either way, Rancor, Sarlacc, you can't go wrong. Mary also says the Rancor, pretty impressed with how they created this guy back then, for sure. Rick says the, the asteroid worm from Empire Strikes Back, the... Yeah, what is it, the Exagoth? Is that the, the the actual fancy term for those things? Yeah, I thought about putting that one on mine as well, Rick. Tyler says the Acclay, a pretty unique design, but I sure want to come across one. No, Tyler, I would not either. All right. Uh, anybody else have a number five that they want to chime in on? Otherwise, we'll just move to our number four. Let's get rid of him. 
Okay, number four for me of top five favorite Star Wars creatures. I had the Gundark. Now, what is a Gundark, you might add? Well, you may recall in The Empire Strikes Back when Han Solo says to Luke after they're back on the Rebel base on Hoth, he says, you look strong enough to pull the ears off a Gundark. So we knew about that expression for a long time. We didn't know what a Gundark was until the Clone Wars, and I provided a picture for you. They are big, ferocious. I think of them as almost like primal gorilla lizards with a werewolf infusion. I mean, that's not the official definition of them, but that's, to me, that's what they look like, and they are very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. Carter, no, you didn't mess up. You're forgiven. That was just a typo. We're going to go with typo. Zax, number five is a, is a tauntaun. Number four from Mean to the Loath Cat. Oh, Loath Cats. Mm, that would have been in my top three, probably. I should have thought. I was, it was pretty daunting. Even in the Star Wars book, we couldn't possibly cover all of the amazing creatures that are in Star Wars. Four for Mary is the Blurg. Love it. Jim's number four, the Nexu. They make an appearance in the Star Wars Bounty Hunter video game. We definitely are challenging to defeat. Oh, good call. Good call. Four for Ross is the Blurg. Awesome. I love it. Ian's number four is a blurg, and he says, Nice, Dan. Thank you. It was great to see how Favreau and Filoni incorporated these creatures who made their first ever appearance in the Ewok TV movie in 85. Such a big part of the first season of Mandalorian. Yeah, and when they get swept away by those Minox, it was just awful. So, yeah, blurgs are great. Tyler's number four is Tauntauns. Love Tauntauns. Carter's number four is Ewoks, one of the most memorable parts of the original trilogy, even though it was a money move for Disney. Well, that's, that's true. But, well, not Disney. But it was... George. George was all about that. It was going to be, of course, Ewoks. No, I'm sorry. It was going to be Wookiees. But then he went with Ewoks. And obviously, it's interesting to me how Ewoks used to be so polarizing. And now I feel like people don't get upset about them at all. Uh, number four for Zach is the Vexus. Okay. Very good. All right. So let's move on to number three. Number three, top five favorite Star Wars creatures. Number three for me is the wampa the wampa takes on many different forms depending on you know if it was the special edition is it the original are we looking at one of the toys even the toys from the kenner line versus more modern toys always look different but at its core the wampa is this really cool very unique creature on hoth that i think has always mystified us the closest thing to an abominable abominable easy for me to say snowman abominable abominable i got it I got it. I knew I'd get it. The abominable. Well, I'm just going to quit while I'm behind. <laughs> Though they're cool. They're just cool. And uh, kind of, they make that really gross sound too. Oh man. I see one that somebody else picked. Uh, Carter. No, you're not, man. You are right where you're supposed to be. And we're glad to have you here. Zach says, um, do the showing of the force healing from Ray. Yep. That's right. That's what those creatures are from. Uh, Dianaga. Any idea if there's a canon reason for it to be on the newly built Death Star? You know, I don't know the reason, actually. That would be a fun thing to ask uh, our friends at Lucasfilm. I don't, I'm not sure. It's a great question. Number three for Jim, Tauntauns. Love it. Minta, Blurk, who needs a car anyway. That's right. That's right. And, they, and it takes a little bit of extra skill to learn to ride one, too. Uh, Ian says, Puffer Pigs, adorable, funny, and one of my favorite attractions of the creature stall at Black Spire Outpost. Excellent. Puffer Pigs, I should have thought of those, too. Those are adorable. I tend to think of, like, the... The scary, creepy ones that could eat you, which obviously a puffer pig would not. But yeah, those are great creatures. Ross's number three is Loth Cats. I still can't believe I didn't pick Loth Cats. Man, man. Number three for Tyler is the Vultex. Ooh, nice. Nice call there. Very nice call. Ah, Zach's number three is Porgs. Man, I am failing. I am failing at this list. How could I forget about Porgs? Mary's number three is the Pergills. They were so cool and gorgeous swimming through space. I do love Pergills. Carter's is three is the Mudhorn, one of the first scenes where the child uses the force. That's right. Great call, Carter. I love the Mudhorn that Jim mentioned earlier in the show. I wish I had thought of those as well. All right. So that was number three. Let's go on to number two. Da -da -da. The Tauntaun. I love Tauntauns. Tauntauns are adorable. They're cool. They really... When I think of the iconography of the Empire Strikes Back, Tauntauns are one of the first things that come to my mind. I mean, so much of Hoth comes to my mind, but the Tauntauns are the first creature that we saw in the film. And they're memorable because of, unfortunately, how one of them dies, how Han uses the lightsaber. But just the, the fact that they look sort of like 
good loyal companions that everybody want to have and they're they're surprising like sort of a sort of a half reptile half mammal which wouldn't make sense but this is star wars it doesn't have to make sense it's science fantasy it's supposed to be fun i love tauntauns they are great let's see what everybody else has terry didn't make a list this week but he's going to mention the sarlax since it hasn't been brought up yet great choice have you seen the the baby sarlax at galaxy's edge um it's very very cool it's very, very cool. It's the Doc Ondar shop, and which is the, one of the coolest places you'll ever be if you're a Star Wars fan anyway. But yeah, check it out if you haven't already. Tyler Kowalki and Monkey Lizard such a little jerk of a creature, but they're so funny to see. Yes, speaking of Kowalki and Monkey Lizards. <laughs> thank you, Ross. Colby says the Zillow Beast. You know, the Zillow Beast I thought about putting on there. Hmm, it's a good choice. That's, that's a great arc in Clone Wars. Ian says he came super close to putting them on his list too. Mary, I uh, love those space whales. The space whales are so key to Rebels, aren't they? Jim, number two, the white loath cat. I like that it serves as a guide for Ezra. Similar to how the white Kodamo spirits in Princess Mononoke serve as guides of the forest. You're right, Jim, and I'm sure that's not an accident that there's a connection either. Ian's number two, Porgs, easily one of the most iconic parts of the sequel trilogy. Agreed. Ah, backing you up is... is Ross with Porgs. And look at Mary with Porgs. Three in a row. No way. Four in a row, Porgs. That, is that a record for four in a row of the exact same thing for our live shows? That's so cool. Nice job. Two, for me to Tauntaun, reliable unless they get eaten by Wampa. Absolutely. Hey, hey, Eric. Good to have you back, man. We have missed you. So glad to have you back on the show. Zach's number two is a Rancor. Uh, Mary's Colby... She, Mary says, Colby Mead Zilla Beast was my number six. Oh, cool. Cool that you have a number six, too. Cotter's number two, Rathar, another crazy nightmare fueled creature. Absolutely. I thought about putting them on there because they kind of remind me of like if the boulder from Raiders of the Lost Ark had teeth and tentacles. And Mason and I have played the Lego Force Awakens game, as, as many of you probably have. And the Rathars are fun to face in that as well. All right. So that was number two. It's time for our number one. Our number one, my number one, cue the dramatic host pause, like Ryan Seacrest, right? So my number one, usually when I make these lists, I know right away what my number one is, and I kind of fit five through two in there somehow. When I started making this list, though, I had no idea what my number one was going to be. And even when I picked it, I thought, well, I guess I don't have a particularly strong horse in this race. But if I really think about it, and I really pick my number one, it's the dewback. Now, why am I picking the dewback? Well, look at that picture. I mean, that's enough said, right? The dewback is super cool. I remember that still of it from some of the publicity stuff for A New Hope back way back in the late seventies. I always loved it. I love the Kenner one that I still have. It's one. Of, it's on my one of my featured shelves. I got to redo this video uh, in here because it's got some cool stuff, but. I just love them. I love the figure that the 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 or the vehicle that it was that Kenner had, and I like that it shows up in the Mandalorian. They're just a really really cool, like a a massive lizard beast of burden. They're just great. I love Dubacks, and I don't think they've come up on anybody's list either. Okay, let's see what we got here. Dave says the Rathar action figure was a true nightmare, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Eric's on vacation this week, so we can stay up later. Awesome, Eric. Well, we love to have you, my brother. So good to have you here. Meet is number one. Porgs, incredibly adorable and just as cute as a child, almost. Oh, fair enough. There's, I don't think anybody would fault you for that. Mary has a tie with the Loath Cats and the Loath Wolves. Loath Wolves are great. I really was debating putting them on there, but I sort of consider them sentient, so I didn't put them. But you certainly can't go wrong with them. Tyler's number one is also Porgs. I know they were made just to make money, but I love these little things. I wish I could have one as a pet. You know what? That that may be true, but of course, as many of you know, puffins were all over that island when they were filming, so they had to use something to cover them up because they're not going to get rid of them because that would be unethical and would mess with the, uh, the, the delicate balance of nature. So they created porgs, and boy, did it work out great. Ross is number one is a tauntaun. Of course, you know I love tauntauns. Ian's number one is Ewoks. How many creatures can lay claim to defeating the Galactic Empire? Enough said. That's right. That's two enough sets by us. How about that? Meet his honorable mention the Loath Wolves and the Crystal Foxes from Crate. Ah, the Crystal Foxes. Yes. Jim's number one is a Loath Wolf. To me, they're guardians of both the forest and nature, similar to how the wolves in Princess Mononoke are guardians of the forest. 
And Jim, you may have noticed in the Star Wars book, Loth Wolves are covered in great detail. I have it on good authority that your favorite caffeinated host wrote that section too. Wink. <laughs> All right. Cotter's number one is Porgs. No introduction needed. Agreed. Ian says, and Dubex also make an appearance in The Mandalorian. Exactly. I was, just, I was really thrilled about that. Dave says, anything with Loth in its name is a winner. I agree with you. Zach's number one is Banthas. If one for them, Obi-Wan couldn't have saved Luke due to Luke looking for the Tuscans. True. Uh, Cole Horton. Look at that. I love that guy. Hey, Cole. Good to have you on the show, my friend. Speaking of the Star Wars book, my one of my co-authors, the great Cole Horton. Honored to have you on the show, my friend. Eric's, uh, oh, by the way, he says, uh, Thidax, a creature I got to name. That's right, dude. That is right. Very, very good call. Awesome. I love when people have like deep cuts of stuff. Eric says, are Ewoks considered creatures? I don't think they are because there's, to me, they're sentient. And so they can think they don't, don't just react on instinct, but they're cute. So we won't, we won't, we won't quibble. But, you know, if I were keeping score, I'd be like, mm. but still, cute factor is off the charts. Daniel says, Salacious Crumb, that dude stuck with me forever, and it's classic Henson. It really is. Jim Henson, is his mark is indelible for a lot of things in Star Wars, and his company, of course, the creation of of Yoda that he gave to Stuart Freeborn and Frank Oz. But yeah, Jim Henson all the way. Mary says, another honorable mention, Ahsoka's Al slash Convor. Yep, the Convor is a great choice. But I would almost consider that sentient as well. But it's still, it's a, it's a great creature. Colby says, honorable mention, the Empire Strikes Back Minox. They are super gross. C-3PO does not like them. I can tell you that for sure. All right, I love it. So let's talk about what next week's top five is going to be. You know, we've done top five Luke moments, Leia moments, Han moments. So I do want to get back to that. But really, what you all want to talk about is the Mandalorian. So we're going to kind of do a bit of a Mandalorian review show together. Of course, I will do my typical recap of the Mandalorian every week. So we can talk about and break down each incredible episode of season two of The Mandalorian. But you're all going to do that with me. Top five moments from The Mandalorian season two premiere. So make sure that you watch The Mandalorian season two premiere this weekend on Disney Plus, And then come back with your top five moments. It can be anything. It can be music. It can be a scene. It can be a line. It can be a moment. It can be an overall feeling. It can be anything. It can be the title. I will leave that up to you however you see fit. However you see fit. Very good. All right. So it's time for Ask Dan Z. And when, during Ask Dan Z, we're going to show you some highlights of the signing from last weekend, which was great fun and had a wonderful turnout. Eric says, really enjoying your book, Dan. Congratulations. Well, thank you, my friend. And, of course, Cole is on here with us, too. So um, shout out goes out to Cole and Pablo as well, Eric. Very, very kind of you. I'm glad that everybody is enjoying it. It's been a lot of great feedback. This is indeed the way. Thank you, Zach. Minta is excited. It's going to be amazing talking about season two of The Mandalorian. And Jim says it's hard to believe season two is already here. This will be a great top five. Well, thank you. I feel like it's very appropriate. And we're going to see a lot of this is the way. And it's going to be fun because it's The Mandalorian. It's Star Wars. And it's this great community that we have. Ian's uh, agreeing this will be really funny. I'm thinking about when I'm, when I'm watching at 3 a.m. on Friday morning. Oof. No, he meant fun. I knew what you meant. No worries. All right. Let's go jump into Ask Dan Z, shall we? Oh, where's my little, where's my little bada boom? Here we go. All right. So what I want to do. Oh, look at this guy. I love it, Mason. This is the way. <laughs> Very good. Mason knows what's going on. Speaking of Mason, I want to show you some clips uh, from last week when we had a book signing for the Star Wars book. It was the first book signing that I've been a part of. And I got to tell you, I absolutely loved it. It was so great. So great. Tyler says, the signing was probably the most fan I've had all year. And it was great to see Dan signing books and interacting pe with people from beginning to end. Well, thank you, Tyler. So kind of you, you were such a big part of the whole experience. Tyler was there for probably the longest besides my family and me. It was great to catch up with Tyler and, and everyone here. Uh, here are some some pictures. Minta says, I really enjoyed your book. It was beautifully put together. Do you think you might write another book? Well, Minta, I would sure love to. And I thank you so much for your support. I would absolutely love to. I'm open to it. 
and it's I kind of have the bug for it. Not kind of, I do have the bug for it. It's it's great fun. The process is fascinating. Hopefully, everybody got to listen to the show this week where we did talk about everything that went into the creation of coffee with of the Star Wars book. It was Tom and Corey interviewing me. It was really weird to be interviewed on my own show, but it was great fun to talk all about the Star Wars book and the behind the scenes. And believe me, this week, wow. If you thought that was fascinating and you felt like a fly in the wall for that episode, just wait until we've got what we've got for you this week. All right. So on the left is a picture that Ross Halliburton took, which I thought was a beautiful one. And Ross is such a gifted photographer and videographer anyway. So Ross, thank you for that great picture. On the right is my wonderful uh, three of the five members of my beautiful family. Of course, my lovely wife, Tiana, is, is next to me. And then, of course, my right-hand man, literally and figuratively, Mason Z. We've got a couple of uh, some of the Star Wars book. The Star we the I brought a significant amount of books. They sold out in an hour, which I was pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised. Uh, Mary, thank you. Says the book is beautiful. So much information. Well, thank you, Mary. It's it's great. It was great fun to write. It's great fun to read. Daniel wants to know when the book tour is. Well, Daniel, I can tell you what, buddy. If not for this pandemic, we would have had a pretty cool thing going on. We're going to make the best of it. The wheels are always in motion. All right. So, oh, the next one. There's Mason and I again. That Millennium Falcon is actually a Bluetooth speaker that I got when The Force Awakens came out. So we had some Star Wars music going. And this was all done at Eli's. This is a coffee shop where I wrote probably 60% of the book on a couple of weekends. And then, of course, um, the rest of what I did at the studio. But it was cool. And then right there's Mason watching me sign a book. I it's There's nearly nothing like sharing this moment with my son and my family, but it's very special. I'm so proud of Mason. And Mason even autographed a couple of books too, which was so great. That was probably my favorite part of the whole experience. Ian said, it was great listening to you, Tom McCrory, in the main show this week. Dan, so much pride for you. Well, thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. So much fun. Eric says, I definitely came across some bits that were new to me. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I think you're going to find a lot of stuff that you're going to be like, wow, I didn't know that. Or you make you think about things differently, as I've been promising. Okay, on the left here is my uh, niece, Elizabeth, and Mason on the right is my entire family. Well, not my entire family, but my wife, Mason, and me. And then my niece, my brother, and then my mom came as well. So that was fun. There were people came from all over. It was really, really rewarding for sure. All right, you know these two yahoos. So on the left is, of course, Corey, uh, my co-pilot for four years on Coffee with Kenobi. He's still our main designer. And he's the co-creator of the show with me. It was, of course, you got to have Corey. Then you got to have Tom on the right. Tom, our CWK newsman, was there. Of course, my boys were there. That's that's how it goes, right? We're we're all we're all buddies here. Uh, speaking of buddies, there's all of us again. There's all of us together with Mason. And on the right is Ross and Alex Picasso and Tyler Pompa. There's real. I mean, Alex and and Ross came the farthest. Uh, Ross from Indianapolis and Alex from Chicago. What an incredible blessing to have this incredible community. These amazingly loyal, good people. I love it. I love it. Cole loves it. He says, what a bunch of scoundrels. That's right. Do you hear that, guys? That's some that's some, <laughs> that's some, some trash talk right there for one of the best. I love it. Uh, Eric says, uh, he came across bits that were new. And he says, he'd love to ask a couple, but I don't want to spoil anything here. Yeah, well, maybe you can email me. We'll see what we can do. Jim says, great. Pictures, Dan, so exciting. Well, thank you. It was it was very exciting. Surprisingly, we, Ross and I, we couldn't believe it afterwards. We didn't get a picture together, which we're going to have to rectify that. But I had to throw this up there. And, of course, Ross, Alex, and Tyler are supporting the CWK Alliance caps. On the left, we've got Andrew, who was recently on Coffee with Kenobi. And on the right is my friend Troy, who I, I work with at the high school. And he's a great guy. It was great to have him there with his son, supporting everything. Let's see, we've got a couple more. There's all of us. There's me, Corey, Tom, Mason. And then there's Tyler, Tyler Pompas. So look, there's the, there's the. I call it the Fab Five. That's a good, that's a good Star Wars five sum to come to your trivia night for sure. But it was again an honor to have Tyler and everyone there. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. On the left is Eunice and Andrew. Were there? Andrew was there via phone because he was in college. But they are former students of mine. It was really rewarding that they came. I was felt very blessed and happy about that. And then on the right is Alex, who brought his. His awesome wife, they came down from Chicago to be a part of this, which was really, really cool. Alex is a great guy. And then I think this is the last one on the left. We've got some of Mason's friends. 
they came down and Mason signed one of their books. And I, I do feel like I should apologize on behalf of my wife. I should have steamed that uh, table cover. It looks terribly wrinkled. So I apologize. I just didn't think about that. I was thinking about Sharpies and all this kind of stuff. So I apologize. On the right is my dear friends for a long time, the Berkeys, Greg, Karen, and Connor. So they came from Springfield. That was awesome, too. Thank you, Eric. It was it was truly a blessing. So much fun. All right. So you got a chance. I This has actually been a quick show, but, you know, the Bears are on. So I know you all want to go watch the Bears. Yeah, you got any questions for me about the book? Now, of course, there's some things I really can't answer, but there's I'm happy to at least consider your, your questions. It, it was, again, an amazing book to compile, to write, to be able to write a book with these guys that I've looked up to for so long. Pablo Hidalgo and Cole Horton was incredible, incredible blessing. Those guys are icons. So to be able to share a byline with them is, is beyond amazing. Very, 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 very blessed. Terry says, oh, wow, that was such a great experience. So happy for you. Well, t thank you, Terry. I hope there's going to be more. I definitely hope there's going to be more. And it's very tricky because in the pandemic, uh, people are saying, what does a socially distanced book signing look like? Well, everybody wears masks. Everybody stays away. The people that came up for those pictures were not as close as they looked. And it was very, very brief. Everybody had their masks on. So it worked out well. They had every, uh, Eli spaced out everything beautifully. Daniel wants to know how long did it take to write. It took me... Mm, I think it was about six, seven weeks. That sounded about right, Cole. I think that's I think about six, seven weeks. Um, and then again, Daniel, I, I know I'm a broken record, but I highly recommend that you listen to this week's Coffee with Kenobi show number 365. I talk all about the ins and outs of that that I think you'll really get a kick out of. Ian says, what was the most surprising aspect for you? Honestly, the most surprising thing for me was my, that it greatly enhanced my appreciation of Leia, who I've always loved, but to sort of Walk in her shoes by writing about her really was really, really cool. Terry says, another signing date coming up. Uh, it's very possible. We're, we're working. We're working at stuff. And Cole's backing up as far as the about six, six to eight week time frame. What I think is amazing is that Cole, I mean, I was writing. This was my first book and doing everything. But Cole's writing multiple books at once. So at least it seems that way. So hats off to you, man. That, wow. I don't know how you kept it all straight, but kudos to you for sure. All right, any other questions for me? Of course, as I said, next week we're going to be looking at, uh, well, what you think about the premiere of the Mandalorian Season 2 trailer. So that's going to be great because you're all going to want to talk about it. I'm certainly going to want to talk about it. There's no question about that. Uh, this week on CWK Pour Over, we, it was our Halloween special. We talked about things that scared us. Or is th we basically took uh, st archetypes of, of scary things and discussed if they were scary to us or not. It was fun. We also talked about Ray and the Last Dragon, which isn't related to Halloween, but we wanted to at least talk about it because it was a really cool thing. What else is really, really cool is when you are a member of Be able to find all this information on Coffee with Kenobi, www.coffeewithkenobi.com. We would love to have you there to chat with us about all different kinds of things. And if you want to hear more about CWK Pro, then you need to become a member of the CW. So that, I think, is going to do it for this week. Colby's got a question. What would it take to get you to visit the top of the Empire State Building? Uh, that's a shameless pour-over plug. Yes. Um, to visit the top of the Empire State Building, my wife, who's my the absolute love of my life and the most wonderful person I've ever met, she can't get me up there. So nothing's getting me up there. But if anybody else likes and they like heights, be my guest. You have my blessing. I'll just stay on the ground because that's no thanks. I don't know how King Kong did it, to be honest with you. I don't know how he did. Oh, well, hey, thank you so much, everybody. A great show this week talking about The Mandalorian, about the signing of the Star Wars book. Keep those questions coming about the Star Wars book. Undoubtedly, you're still pouring over it. It's, it's a very dense, heavy book, a beautiful book that we're all so proud of. And it's going to make you think about Star Wars in a lot of different ways, as promised. It's going to be a lot of fun. Get those 
list ready for the premiere of season two of The Mandalorian. Thank you so much, Mary. Another great see you to Monday. Have a wonderful week, everybody. It's time to go watch the rest of the Bears game with my family. But I had to take a break because I needed to spend it with each and every one of you, my Star Wars family. Again, thank you so much for the support. Be sure to go out and buy the Star Wars book available wherever books are sold. It's doing really, really well. It's the number one bestseller in the UK, and it's the absolute top book being sold on the Kindle, which is an, an incredible, incredible thing, too. So stay well, keep the Star Wars faith, the ice cheer will. Daniel, Jim, thank you for joining us. Tyler, thank you. He says, thank you all for another great Monday night. And Joe Mando on Friday. I know I will. We sure will. Eric, good night to you. Thanks for being here. Ian, have a great week as well. Thanks so much, everybody. Remember, this is the podcast and Star Wars book you are looking for. Have a good one, everybody. See you next time.